start recording now. Um, just FYI. Okay, so I just wanted to go through a couple of upcoming opportunities. So first off is applications for our Youth Leadership Council are now open. Um, the YLC is open to high school students only, unfortunately. Um, I see a lot of middle school uh, teachers here. So unfortunately, middle school students can't join, but we're going to have a lot of act other cool opportunities for middle schools this year. So keep your eyes out for all that information. But um, all the information about the YLC is here. I'll put a link in the chat once um, once I'm done presenting, but uh, you can apply through October 11th. We'd love to see all the applications. It's a really cool opportunity um, to meet other activated high school students. And you'll hear more about the YLC during our presentation today. Um, another cool thing we have coming up is our air quality environmental justice training. It's gonna be in-person. You get air quality monitors by doing this training. You learn a lot about how to use the air quality monitors. It's all about studying the air quality in your um, in your neighborhood and trying to figure out how to take action about that information that you gather. So very cool. Come join us. And finally, we've updated our sustainability hub. It used to be called the resource portal. Now it's called the sustainability hub. We've tried to like reorganize it to make it a little bit clearer to navigate our resources. Um, so I encourage you to check it out. Again, I'll put all the links to this in the chat when I'm done presenting. So that's what I have for me. And then I want to um, give it away to our YLC core, our amazing YLC core. So excited to have, um, to have them with us. So without further ado, handing it over to Zoe. Um, hi everyone, I'm Zoe and good afternoon. Welcome to our student-led climate action workshop. Um, and a special thank you to our YLC core, Michael, Gabby, me, Mo, Luca, and Mora. Michael, we can see the slides. <laughs> oh my. Okay. So we just, we're basically finished with the welcome and shortly we'll have an icebreaker. And after that, I'll introduce some frequently asked questions that we receive. And then our, my other YLC core members will introduce like getting to our, know our climate connections. And to end it all off, we'll have resources and questions available. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Luca. I'm part of the Wild C4. Um, I go to high school for environmental studies, and I am a junior. So we're just going to leave you guys. We're just going to do a little icebreaker to get to know each other. Um, so what you're going to share is your name, where you teach, what grades and subjects you teach, and also your favorite hobbies and or passions. Um, we're going to do it like popcorn style. So if I'll like pick the first person and then you pick the next person and then so on until we finish with everyone. So, um, or unless someone wants to go first, uh, but if not, I think Karen Phillips, are you okay going first? Sure, hi everybody. Okay. Thank you for holding this. Um, so my name is Karen Phillips. I teach at MS217. Robert A. Van Wick, the Green Magnet School for Career Exploration. I teach grades six and seven, and I teach sustainability. And my hobbies are um, hiking, um, piano. My passions are, you know, trying to help the planet um, and be with my friends and family. Okay, so um, Margaret, Borgert, can you unmute yourself? Hello, Karen. How are you and everybody? Thanks. Uh, I also am uh, a teacher. I'm a librarian uh, at Middle School 172, which is in District 26 over there in kind of Glen Oaks, Queens. But I do live in Bayside, too. And my son went to 74. So um, I know about that. Anyway, um, I'm the librarian there. I'm also sustainability coordinator. 
Michael uh, Magazine was our uh, student mentor for the green team when we were virtual and also back in school. And I just reopened the green team uh, this week as part of like climate week to kind of, you know, um, get kids to join up. Um, what do I like to do? I do yoga in the park and go swimming. And uh, my passion too is like plastic, cleaning up the plastic in the oceans and um, letting people know about, you know, what's going on with climate change and how they can help. Oh, and shall I call on, um, who shall I call? I wanna see everybody. Uh, I see students, wait a minute, don't mind me. Oh, now I'm just seeing, where did everybody go? And are we talking to all sorts of people? Dorothy, how about you, Dorothy? Can you uh, come on, hello? Yes, 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 hi. Um, I uh, am teaching currently at um, MS 297 and it's in the it's actually my first year at the school. I was at a uh, school in Brooklyn last year, uh, and that was my very first year teaching middle school. And then previously I taught for high school for a number of years. So this is my first year at this middle school in Manhattan, and I am the sustainability coordinator. Uh, and I have like a team of people. So I've never um, been a coordinator before. So I'm um, just trying to you know brainstorm with my team different ideas. And I discovered today that I have a rooftop garden. So the science teacher is actually very involved in that garden. And so we might partner together um, in working on it. Um, but I'm here to just learn more about things that we could do as a school. Oh, I have to call someone, right? Um, Ethan? Was he called yet? Hi, um, no, I wasn't called yet. Um, my name is Ethan and I'm a student at the high school for math, science and engineering. It's in Manhattan, but I live in Bayside. Um, so I'm in the 11th grade right now. And some of my hobbies are playing badminton. I also, um, I also do Taekwondo and I also really, um, enjoy like advocating for um, environmental like policy and stuff. And I like learning about the climate. Oh, should I call someone? Um, Cinnamon Harris? It looks like Ms. Harris might not be able to unmute, but uh, Luca, do you want to keep us moving? Yeah, sorry, my screen froze for a second, but um, when does Cynthia, do you want to go? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Cynthia Quinones. I was just nominated to be the sustainability coordinator. Um, I, this is my first year doing hydroponics with my school. Uh, I previously, I was a pre-K teacher. So this year I'm going to be working with pre-K to fifth grade. Uh, let's see my hobbies. I'm like a DIY person. I love to DIY things. Uh, my passion, traveling. I love to travel. I love the knowledge that you get from all these different countries and even just different states, being around people, ha communicating with them. And uh, that's it. Actually, I can't even see my board. I can't see who else is on here. It's only showing me the icebreaker. I can call on someone else if you want me to. Uh, let's see, Josie Nunez. Hi, my name is Josie Nunes. Um, I am a 3K teacher. I work at PS108K. 
Um, my hobbies are like um, attending to book club and learning, you know, more about myself. I like mindfulness activities and I love to spend time with my family, the whole family, not only my kids, my husband, but with the whole family. And I'm going to be working with the a school um, a sustainability coordinator too. And I'm going to call out um, Soy. Oh, maybe somebody call her already. Um, okay, let me see who. Let me see, let me see. Okay. Nina? Yes, okay. I'm Nina. I, I am the sustainability coordinator and the Spanish teacher. I teach from third grade to eighth grade. Uh, some of my hobbies are that I love biking. I bike everywhere and I compete sometimes. I also love um, hiking and somebody also mentioned that they like traveling. I love traveling as well and I feel that there's a lot to learn from many people and of course one of my passions is to uh, to see what I can do to help the environment and to teach the students how to take care of it. I'm going to call on Jaysha. Uh, okay. So uh, I'm Jay, I'm actually a LLC core member. Uh, I currently go to school at Stars in High School. Uh, I'm currently in 10th grade. I play with hobbies. Um, I guess I play a lot of chess and d and with friends, so probably that. Um, I can't remember who has the been followed yet. Uh, Michael, have you been followed? Um, I can go. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Michael. Um, I'm the one presenting the slides. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm done, or should we just? Yeah. So um, I don't actually teach anywhere. I'm a student at Gramercy Arts High School. Um, but my favorite subject at school is history. Uh, I just really like it as a subject. Um, uh, my favorite hobbies. I've really gotten into reading books recently. I don't know. I feel like we're in such a digital age, and I feel like going back to like you know the old school ways is a cool way of learning. Um, and I'll pass it off to one more, whoever hasn't gone, um, if you want to unmute. Hello, this is Nancy Kerwicki. I am uh, teaching at MS 74, I teach eighth grade science, and I am the garden club mentor, and I've been doing it. Well, for a number of years now, and we also have a green team run by someone else, but we do have some coordinations at times. Uh, things I like to do, I like to do gardening, be outdoors in nature, uh, do woodworking. I have my garden club. It's also called Woodworking 101 in my mind, and we build things for the garden. And uh, of course, I want to help the world. Uh, Managed through our climate crises and environmental crises. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt the icebreakers, but we uh, don't have much time. So if anyone wants to put uh, their icebreaker in the chat, that'd be great. And we just could like read through them, get to know each other in the chat, kind of. Um, but anyway, we're moving along now. Um, so yeah, to so our most frequent questions. Thank you so much also for all the amazing icebreakers. Okay, um, so today we'll be talking about the three most frequent questions we get as students. Um, firstly, how can adults and students take cl climate action together? Uh, secondly, how can teachers get students interested in and motivated to take climate action? And third, what subjects should we cover in our green team? So with our first question, how can adults and students take climate action together? We have several ideas for that. Um, our first idea is by talking about climate with other school staff and admin, 
We can promote student interests while also incorporating students into our climate conversation. Um, secondly, by, by using discussions around current events to bring up climate in classrooms, we make climate issues relevant and we encourage students to take action with us. And lastly, our main focus for today is starting and hosting a green team, which is one of the best ways to take action with students. And while the first two ideas we introduced are good ideas of how to take action with students, most of what we're going to talk about today has to do with starting a green team. Thank you, Zoe. So um, the second question, how can teachers get students interested and motivated to take climate action? And um, I'm really glad Ms. Borges is here. Um, I don't know if she remembers, after the end of my first year as a mentor at MS172, we were having an after thought. We were just talking to one another about like how the year went. And Ms. Borger made this <laughs> interesting comment. Um, it was basically that her green team is like its own little community and it isn't like a class, which is one of the benefits of the green team. And I think that's a really good quote because you need to treat your green team like a community. And the way that you sort of build that foundation are about four main ways that I wanna get into. The first way is creating a space for them to build meaningful relationships and express themselves. Now, I know a lot of times as teachers and as just staff at a school, you sort of think of students as, you know, people coming to learn, coming to, you know, accomplish that objective, get good grades and go home. Um, which I think is, you know, <laughs> for the mission statement of a school, you know, a good understanding of what students are. But when it comes to a green team, it also is a team, more so than it is just, you know, a school club. So you need to create that space and you create that space by establishing boundaries, um, saying, hey, this is what I want out of this green team. This is what you want out of this green team. Let's meet in the middle. Um, you want to establish all that expectations, and that is what makes up the sort of generic teamwork aspect of a green team. And I think that's very important to building a foundation. Uh, secondly, I would say give time for students to get to know each other. As we saw here with our icebreaker, when you have activities and certain social interactions between the members of either a green team or any group, people really start to build meaningful connections. They get attached and they start to care about what you're working on. So when you have a, let's say, five minute icebreaker at the start of every meeting or a 10 minute icebreaker, you really develop that social connection for them and you make it more than just another class. You make it something that they actually can take ownership of, which we'll get into later. It, you give them a way to not only connect between other people with similar interests, but you give them a sort of foot in the front door of the advocacy of the environmental field by actually saying, hey, this is how we'll work in the field we're mirroring it now in our school. And I think that's a, a really beautiful way to sort of build that foundation. Thirdly, I would say to understand who your teammates are, every green team member is an entirely different beast. I remember when I was working um, as a mentor at MS172, there was always three types of students. That one student who has a million ideas, who can come up with the most creative thing off of a drop of a hat. There'll be another student who is incredibly shy, but they're really good at either writing, or coming up with a poem. They have a hidden creative talent that is sort of outshone, outshone, sorry. <laughs> That's outshined by that, you know, passionate green team member. And then you'll have the third member who's there, but they don't exactly know what they fit into. You know, they'll have like, let's say a basketball talent or some athletic talent, or even something as random as coding. And they won't really know how they can fit into the mesh of a green team. So understanding each team member's strengths and weaknesses is really good for the last point, which is engaging in material that covers a wide range of subjects. A green team does not need to just be science. I have to make this very clear because a lot of times we'll hear green in the environment and think environmental science, when it's so much more than that. It's environmental justice. It's the history behind it through the social lens. It's also about the sort of intricacies of, let's say, how a particular environmental policy would affect the community, how your school is impacted with recycling, waste, it isn't just one way, and there isn't just one way to convey that point. So when you're engaging with materials that isn't just you know, a typical scientific article, it can be a website, it can be a book, it can be a movie, it can be a piece of art. And that last part, I really wanna get into. So I have a couple of examples. Um, <laughs> Ms. Borger, I'm sure you remember this. Um, so most of these images on here are from MS-172. 
they had a lot of creative students. Um, the bottom left, you can see some drawings, some imaginings of, I believe that is a climate advocate. Um, in the top left, you can see sort of the visualization of how they wanted their logo of the green team to look. Um, to the right of that is a sort of multicolored April is um, Earth Month calendar with a bunch of stuff they can do on every day. Um, that bottom one isn't from MS-172. That's actually an activity our YLC does called the gingerbread person. It's the most popular activity we do. Everyone loves it. Um, it's basically what category, what types of characteristics would you want to see in the ideal YLC member, which I think can go to, for green members too, green team members as well. Um, good listening skills, um, you know, time management skills, etc. And on the far right, everyone came up with this idea to make a logo for themselves using an app that was called Bitmoji. Um, and in fact, I think on this Zoom right now, I have a Bitmoji for my icon. Um, and I think this sort of like creative lens is a great way of utilizing different members skills. Some people are very creative. And I think letting their creativity shine in the green team space is both what you have to do as a leader of a green team and as someone who wants to see these people reach the fullest of their potential. There's no reason that someone who is artistic but not scientifically inclined shouldn't be able to be at the forefront of this movement. And I think the same way that there was that whole art is action movement in the past, it's still true for today. Um, I also have another example. So there was a website that was made and <laughs> it, was, it was next level. This is probably the most extensive website I've ever seen made by a group of middle schoolers. And um, it basically had different types of things that they did. So they had the green crafts group where people would you know, post videos of like, hey, this is a cool craftsmanship thing I found, or here's a cool way I reuse you know, an egg carton to grow plants. Um, there was also the Minecraft education, a different um, education edition sort of tab where it was dedicated to the ideas the students had for you know, showing sustainable architecture through Minecraft. That is a video game. So being really creative and allowing the students to sort of like, show what they're interested in and working from there is a great way to get a green team going and building that foundation. But that last point that I just mentioned of letting the students will the green team goes directly into our next point and I'll leave the floor to, I believe that is. Hi, sorry, I had um, issues unmuting my mic, but um, those are all really great points. Um, thank you, Michael. Uh, the other way to get students interested, which I that like I've seen really work work really well with my school's green team and also others is um, giving students like ownership and responsibility. Um, and what I mean by this is like you know like when students join the green team, a lot of them want to like actually do something because they're passionate about like climate change and sustainability and they want to like be like oh I want to make a difference and I want to help our planet and so like I don't really want to like sit in a classroom and like learn about like different things they can be doing they want to actually do things and so by like giving them ownership and responsibility um I found a lot of students like get, that makes them really interested if you're like we're actually going to do these things or you can choose what we want to what you want to do for our school like for example um, in my school, I received like a small, like a small budget to do basically whatever I wanted with and a ton of students were really interested in like doing something and they were all really passionate because they all felt like they had like ownership and responsibility over this like small amount of money. Um, and so we were able to like host a plant giveaway and so many like students participated. I thought it'd be a small thing, but like over 600 students like helped and it was a whole big thing. So. I would say ownership and responsibility are like the two main things to really like help get a lot of students interested. Um, and next question, we'll go to Laura. Hi everyone, um, my name is Laura and I'm a member of the YLC Core. Um, I'm also an 11th grade student or year one um, of Bard High School Early College Manhattan and I lead the eco club of my school. So. Our third question is, what subjects should we cover in our green team? So in terms of the subjects that we want to cover, we need to think of it as not only are we going to try to um, really integrate subjects that we are talking about in the classroom, but also bring those into the green team. So 
I think a uh, main point to think about is to not feel pressured about making green team the green team that you will be leading or helping uh, work with as another class. Think of it more as a way to bring it, um, bring whatever you're talking about in the classroom into the green team. Um, so that's our first point. Bring your expertise from the classroom into the green team. So ideas that you're passionate about that you are talking about in the classroom or that students are passionate about that you heard them talk about in the classroom, really bring those in and have that discussion in the green team that you weren't able to have in the classroom. Um, our second point is build on subjects from class by using ecology and climate action as a novel lens. So for example, if you were talking about sports in the classroom or toothpaste or whatever, think of a way to connect that to ecology and climate action. Um, think about the processes behind making that toothpaste or, or whatever subject you're talking about and really look at it through a new lens and have that be the subject you are talking about in the green team. Um, and that'll make it a lot easier for you to tackle that subject and talk about it with everybody in the green team. Um, thirdly, allow students to discuss and engage with current events in regards to sustainability. So whether that be um, current events that are related to the class that you are teaching or current events that you have read in the news or that students would like to discuss, allow them to talk about that in the green team so that you can dive into it together, perhaps do an activity about it, um, or just let them vent um, about a current event. And that is really one a great way to get to know each other, but also a great thing to talk about together um, and to get through together. Um, then um, use references and knowledge from classes and personal experiences to guide the team's activities or discussions. So allow um, exterior knowledge of your own or of students to really guide the conversations that you're having or the activities that you're doing. If you are really passionate about gardening and you know a lot about turnips or about onions or tomatoes and you really want to have that in your garden or you want to get inspire the students to talk about that and to have that accessible in your school or in your community start that and really inspire students to think about these things or let them have their own knowledge pour into the green team and what they want to do and the activities that they want to engage in um, use our recommended resources for inspiration and starting points at the end of this presentation we were going to give you a lot of resources and a lot of links to articles and um, documents that provide ideas for activities that are great inspiration for getting the ball rolling and really um, just great talking points for your green team and for students in general. Um, and then also start by accessing and talking about what is lacking or weak in regards to environmental action or tools in your school. If you find that you would really like a garden and you don't have one or that the lights are left on too often in classrooms, talk about that in your green team, tackle that issue. A lot of the times that can bring a lot of people together if they realize that there's not enough green bins or blue bins and that also gets the school body and everyone involved. Um, those that are working with making sure that students have the right tools to work and the right things um, to use in regards to both the environment and also their learning experience. So again, just make sure that you're bringing everything you can from your class into the green team and vice versa. And it's just, it's going to be a great way to balance what you're talking about. Um, and also remember to bring in a lot of the student input um, as Michael was talking about. All right, so um, yeah, as she mentioned, we have a resource page. So on this resource page, um, I'll just quickly give everyone a rundown. So for current events, one of the best sources of current events are New York Times, different newsletters, CNN, um, the IPC every month or so also has a newsletter that sends out an email about their updates. Um, the Guardian, The Intercept, just pretty much any major news organization, they almost always have a newsletter specifically tailored to climate change, environmentalism, and other sort of environment-centric topics. The second best way to find out about current events I found is Novel New York. So Novel New York, anyone in New York State has access to it. It's run by a nonprofit organization, and there's pretty much just millions of articles, books, news um, titles, and all types of content on there. Um, if you want to like in-depth dive on it, there's multiple tutorials on the internet um, run by that nonprofit, and I think they're a really good research. Um, a really good resource for both research and for you know coming up with curriculum 
or ideas for a green team. Secondly, for videos, Greta Thunberg had a great TED talk on student activism. Um, there's also other climate and, and environmentalists who have TED talks and podcasts and just interviews where they talk a lot about student activism, the importance of it, how do you do it the right way, how do you do it the wrong way. Um, there's also Instagram accounts for this. Um, I think the best one is probably going to be, well, aside from our Instagram account, which we'll get to later, um, there's Instagram accounts such as Fridays for Our Future, um, FFF.NYC. Uh, there's Instagram accounts for all of these individual climate activists and advocates. And I think that they all touch upon important topics. And they also let you know of any like pressing issues that are coming up, such as, for example, the climate strike this Friday. Um, and then, of course, on the right side, we have our resource libraries. It's pretty much just a bunch of different libraries and documents that have different topics from the YLC Green Team Workshop all the way down to the Climate Change and Environmental Justice Presentation Series from Nest Plus M. There's a lot in here. Um, there's also more that we have access to if you want any specific topics. So you can reach out to us and we'll be glad to send that to you. Alrighty, hi again. Um, so now we're going to do an interactive activity together. Um, we're going to get to know our climate connections. So this is all about bringing in what we already know and are passionate about and bring that into what we want to do in regards to climate action and especially in regards to our green teams or even as sustainability coordinators what we can do so my question for you is how does what you teach have to do with climate action um, so you can take three minutes to think about this on your own and then we can share out and then split out in groups to share out um, so again the question is what does what you teach have to do with climate action or what can you share with the knowledge that you already have? You have two minutes left. All right, you can start wrapping up your thoughts. All right. So um, does anybody want to start? Otherwise I can get, I can share an example so we can get everyone started, up to you. And you can just unmute yourself and begin talking if you have any ideas. I, I don't, I am a 3K teacher, so I work with the little ones, but um, something that I think we can do in the school is, um, we can create a garden. We don't have, we only uh, do garden inside. You know, like we put it by the windows in each classroom. So we can create a garden outside. It can be in the school backyard or, you know, at the front of the school. 
and we can plant different seeds there. That's one, one idea. And something else that we can do is like, even for the little ones, um, let's say, um, we want activity about recycling. Yeah, those are great ideas. Gardens always get people excited. It's really hands-on and that's amazing. And then recycling, if that's an issue in your school, then that's definitely something that's amazing to tackle. All righty, thank you. Does anybody else have any ideas, things that, that you teach that have to do with climate action or things that you can bring into your green teams? Um, well, so I'm a sustainability teacher. So everything I do, either has to do with climate or environmental justice, you know, and other social issues. But um, so we're also a zero waste school. And, um, you know, so I start the year with getting them to understand what a zero waste school is, why composting is important, sending them down to the cafeteria, you know, to help kids with the sorting, sending them around the school to do energy audits, who has the lights out, um, paper collection. So really trying to get people conscious of, you know, how what we do is affecting the planet and what we can do to, what we can change personally and then how we can influence other people. Yeah, that's wonderful. I think students and even staff members really benefit from looking at the school and assessing like what resources do you have? What can we improve? what teachers are doing a good job with the amount of energy they're consuming, all that is super important, definitely. That's really inspiring, thank you. Um, does anybody else wanna share? Any ideas? Oh, I will, Margaret Poor. I'm, I'm also do sustainability too, like Karen, and we are a zero waste school and trying to you know, get the sorting done and make connections you know, to why it matters, how, you know, throwing your cardboard plate in the brown bin is actually gonna, you know, uh, and the food waste, you know, can actually help fight climate change to make that connection so important. And I've really come to believe, you know, that the school, like Michael, you know, we are this community, the energy we use, the fuel. I always bring my uh, students down to the um, boiler room so, you know, they can see actually the fuel that we use, you know, so, and, and the electricity, you know, and the rating that our school got, like seeing what's actually in the building and, and you know, using it. And um, so that, and also as a librarian, you know, about how do you research? How do you find reliable information, useful information, um, and just having materials available as well. So that's what I do. Thank you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, I think something else that if you kind of like if students start to have like a good gist of what's going on in the school and they've already kind of moved past resolving a lot of things in the school, something you can also do is branching out to organizations that kind of work with the same subjects as you do. And I think your school is very big on composting and zero waste. So maybe something that you can link into is organizations like Earth Matter that handle composting. And maybe that can inspire students to branch out and to connect to different organizations. Um, that work with the same subjects that you do in your school and really doing those hands-on things. But yeah, those are wonderful ideas. Thank you. Um, anybody else would like to share? As part of our eighth grade curriculum in living environments, we have a, a project towards the end of the year uh, where groups choose their own action plan for some environmental uh, problem, whether it's air pollution, water pollution, endangered species, and they have to do something that makes a difference. And it's worked out real well and got some really good uh, active students doing good things for the planet. That's wonderful. I think that's also something that you could maybe try spreading out across the year. So maybe students, what we do at, at the YLC is we set up climate action plans or CAPS, um, which are plans that we wanna have in our school or in our communities um, in regards to climate action. So that's definitely something that your students can do, um, set something up for the beginning of the year so that they can start thinking about what they wanna do for their school, for themselves or for their communities um, throughout the school year. So it's not just a one-time thing, um, cause that way students keep 
themselves engage with climate action and sustainability all throughout the year. But yeah, that sounds like an amazing activity. Um, all right, and then as Michael said in the chat, if you don't want to talk out loud, you can feel free to unmute and type your answer in the chat. But otherwise, does anybody else want to talk? Hi, I'll say something. This is Paula from 811X. So what I would say is that I agree with everyone here. And as you were talking about making community organization connections, um, we've been able to do that. We have many of the same uh, things that other schools have. Uh, we're zero waste, we have a school garden, we do composting, rain catchment, but making the community connections, we work with New York Restoration Project. They've been really instrumental in helping us to help students to make those important connections and to see why our individual actions are important. So community connections can mean um, a great deal in helping students. Definitely, that's wonderful. All right, does anybody else wanna share? Also, as Eliza mentioned earlier, another great way to start conversations about sustainability is with the custodial staff because they really have an idea of like how much waste is circulating in the school and the hallways, um, what's going on, in the boiler rooms, all that. Um, so definitely reaching out to them is a good idea. Um, all right, any other ideas or things that you're passionate about that you'd like to bring into the green team, perhaps that you haven't done yet, but things that you're thinking of doing, um, anything of that sort? All right, if not, um, again, feel free to type it in the chat later or just keep thinking about it. But if not, we can go on to Gabby, who is going to wrap up this presentation and go on to the Q&A. Hi, okay, so our Youth Leadership Council applications are now open. So if you know of any high school students, freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior who is interested in and doing any type of climate work, um, they can go ahead and apply. The applications are due October 11th, and the application link is seen on the screen. But if you send a follow-up email, it'll definitely be linked there. Um, and this year, very exciting. All of our events are going to be in person, and we'll be visiting different sites around the city. So if you know of any high school students looking to get in, looking to get into climate work or um, are new to it and want to get into it, or if they're already involved and want to continue to stay involved, please let them know. Does anybody else here want to share about um, what they've done with the YLC or what kind of things you learn in the YLC? I can touch upon some of what the YLC is um, about. So I've been in the YLC, this is my third year, which is pretty much most of my high school experience in the YLC. And I find the YLC is a great way for not only building leadership skills, but also meeting new types of people and discovering new things. One of the best parts about the YLC is that since it's a youth led group and we have a lot of autonomy with what we can do and what we want to do and what we spend our time in, you can really develop ideas that you started off the year with. For example, I remember when I first joined the YLC, I wanted to know more about just what sustainability meant and how like sustainability impacts legislation, how it impacts our nation at large, why does it matter? And by the end of my first year, not only did I know what sustainability was about, um, I was both able to teach it to other people and develop an understanding of how it holds a place in the nation. So I feel like the YLC is not only a great learning experience, I also think it's just a fun place to be. We do have some fun. Um, but we're not we're not all like boring and like super sciencey or super into like the nitty gritty. We do like to have fun as, you know, it's a youth led group. So I feel like any high school students who want that mix of like, I wanna understand what's going on, but I also don't wanna be so bored by like traditional bureaucracy that I don't like the subject. Um, the Wild is a great place. <laughs> 
Yeah, building off of that, um, it's a wonderful place to meet new people, um, to you know network in the DOE. Um, there's a lot of smart people in that office, including Eliza. So definitely a lot of ways to connect with people and organizations. And I'm very excited for this year because we will be doing a lot more traveling and um, going to different organizations, really seeing what they're doing. Um, so I'm very excited to do that. But we're also going to be tackling a lot of interesting subjects, um, doing different projects together, and really working on connecting with our communities and schools and ourselves and the DOE and taking action together. So I think it's a great community and definitely a place where we get a lot of things done. And I'm very excited for this year especially. With that said, um, we're going to go into the Q&A section. So if anyone has any questions about any of the sections we went over or specific questions relating to the resources or any of the things we discussed, feel free to unmute now or put them in the chat. And if you have any questions about the application or the application process, feel free to ask about that too. Um, but the link should, to the application should be in, in the chat if you want to access that. Okay, so someone asked in the chat, are the WILC meetings in person or on Zoom? So the last two years they were on Zoom, but this year we are going heavily in person as um, the pandemic is sort of reaching its end finally. Um, we're, we're trying to get out more and really like explore a lot of these places. So um, we came up with a list of organizations that we wanted to be at for different YLC meetings, and we plan on hosting our YLC meetings at those places. So um, just to throw around a couple of organization ideas we had, we had um, Gowanus Canal Conservancy, um, the DEP, the Cross River. Um, there was also the, um, what was it called? It, there was a lot, basically there's a lot of different places around the city that we're planning on going to. And to get that both, to get both a diverse understanding of the city in terms of like going to Brooklyn, going to Bronx, going to Queens, going to Manhattan, and not just staying in a particular area. So that way people can get an understanding of how the city interacts with this field. Yeah, if I can add something to that, like half of our meetings will be in person at our Office of Sustainability in Queens and Long Island City, and then the other half will be at different organizations, like Michael said, in all the different boroughs. So, thanks, guys. How selective is the YLC application process? So I feel like, Eliza, you'd be better at like discussing the application than I. Uh, that was one of the parts I didn't really care for more, <laughs> care so much. Yeah, how selective? Um, last year, we had about 50 people apply and we have like 30 spaces. So I would say that's probably not super selective, but I would, um, there's like two written questions on the application. So um, you can either, either provide a written answer to that or like submit a video with you just like talking through your answers, kind of whatever works better for you if you're better at oral communication or written communication. Um, and it's two open-ended questions. And that's just so we have a better idea of who you are as a student, what kind of things you're interested in. Um, and if you're starting to make the connection between what you're interested in and how it connects to sustainability. So I would say you don't have to be like um, super into sustainability and climate action right now. Like if you are, that's amazing, but you don't have to be. For example, one of our really active students last year, Janaya, um, she, when she first started the YLC, she was really into um, tackling homelessness issues in her community. And through the YLC, she was able to make that connection of what is homelessness um, and like community, like just being housed, how, what does that have to do with sustainability? So I think there's definitely room to learn about sustainability and climate action. And I think we really value that. It's more like just answering the questions to figure out who you are and yeah, what what kind of gets you going? Where are your passion areas? And are you interested in learning about kind of environmental and sustainability issues? 
but he's Um, there was another question in chat I saw. Um, does anyone know whether climate change will be part of the science curriculum citywide anytime soon? So I actually do know a little bit about this. So there was a whole push last year and earlier this year to get particular people on board with the whole, you know, climate change curriculum. The problem is the people that you need on board for that are in the New York regions. So the New York regions is pretty much the state group that controls education. And it's been very hard <laughs> to get those board members to agree to that. I don't know how much it has progressed, but last time that I was a part of a meeting on that, which was like a couple of months back, the sort of consensus was that it's in the process, but there were a little under the amount of people that they needed. So I'm assuming some, we'll probably get an update sometime around October, November. I'll probably hear more about that. So if you wanna know more about that, Ms. Borger, you can contact me and I'll definitely send that information out. <laughs> yes, when we're all underwater at the rate that this city goes. I think something really important in regards to like the time we have left and just like in general um, is starting as soon as we can. And even if it's not part of the curriculum, making sure that we talk about it and that students know that it's important to you and to everyone in the community is really great. So I think implementing what we talked about in the classroom, but also perhaps in your green teams or as a sustainability coordinator is amazing because even though it's not part of the curriculum, you can really start to get students interested um, and make it almost part of the curriculum on our own. And I know that's a little bit hard sometimes and definitely won't necessarily be backed all the time, but I think students are definitely starting to get more and more interested in climate change and ecology and sustainability in general because it's becoming such a big part of our lives. Um, so I think that they would be happy to talk about it. And if you have any ideas um, or things you want to share in the classroom, you should definitely start talking about those subjects. Um, I saw someone with their hand raised, so you can speak. Yes, I, I had my hand raised. Two things. One, um, I used to do it a lot more. I didn't do it as much last year, but morning announcements. Um, you know, and I did have green team members, you know, doing, or even the other day I asked my principal, please shout out a student who came up with an idea that our utensils and napkins should be stored in paper in the cafeteria rather than in the plastic pouches. He had come to me with this whole thing, why, you know, about why are our, uh, why is our napkin and utensil in a plastic pouch? Why can't they make a paper container? Right. And over the loudspeaker today, my principal thanked him, you know, for his ingenuity. Um, and then the other thing is we use music a lot. So at all of our um, arts festivals, we're having we do a song about water. We do a song about, you know, taking care of, you know, keeping our habitat safe for the bees. We have a song about that we're the Earth's family. And, you know, we have the school community join us. I do it in my classroom a lot, like I was singing with them today. Um, and then we also do it with the whole com you know, community. I think with that, if anyone doesn't have any other like pressing questions right now that they can unmute for or put in the chat, um, we're gonna wrap up. The only thing that I wanna add at the end is since we're talking a lot about education, the Wild Seas actually trying out a new program this year, the community pop-up. So, this idea, I don't want to get too much into because it's still in sort of like the pre-planning phase, but ideally if any of your schools are like in the area of these community pop-ups, which will be run sort of by the YLC members, um, I personally will send out an email to your schools to let you guys know that when it's going to be happening and if you want to show up. They're pretty much just going to be pop-ups relating to, oh, let me stop sharing my screen. Um, they're pretty much going to be pop-ups relating to any wide-ranging topic from an invasive species that's pressing the community to a certain type of flood protection that you might want to, you know, keep out for, or even like a climate legislation bill that's going to be passed soon. There's just going to be a variety of different environmental and sustainably focused topics. And um, if you want to know more about that, check into the Wild Sea Instagram and a couple of other of our resources, which are here on this page. You can check us out at, at YouthNYCSustain on Instagram and at New York City Sustainability at New York City School Sustainability on Instagram. And I definitely will be making a post with more about that, um, especially so that your communities, if any of them are in the area of one of our pop-ups, can get notified and you know show up because I think they're going to be cool 
spots to both, you know, socialize and also to learn about stuff. But with that, that is the end of our meeting for today. I'd like to thank everybody who came out. Um, as Eliza put into the chat, join us for the rest of Climate Week. And I'll send it back to Eliza if she wants to wrap up. Thank you guys so much. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you YLC Core for hosting this. And yeah, we hope to see you at the rest of our Climate Week workshops and hopefully there'll be more information about Sustainability 101, all of our in-person trainings coming up. Um, so yeah, keep in touch, follow us. And it was wonderful to see you all today. So thanks for coming. Bye guys. Bye, thank you. Bye. Thank you so thank much. You everyone. Bye. Bye everyone, happy Climate Week.